Hi, my name is Maggie Wood, and this is Miss Wyatt, and she's the librarian here at Louisville Collegiate School, and she recommended uh, Looking for Alaska by John Green to our class, and I decided to interview her about it. Okay. Okay. Did you like Looking for Alaska? I loved Looking for Alaska. That's why I recommended it. Why did you like it? Um, because I think it's an authentic teen book. It feels it has problems. He's not perfect. None of the characters are perfect. And I think John Green writes in a very honest teen voice. I think that's true too. In the end, the answer to the mystery that they were searching for wasn't answered. Why do you think you wrote it like that? Um, I think it's on purpose. I think it goes back to that authenticity because I don't think life ends in nice, neat little corners. I don't think we find out the answers to everything. I don't think we, uh, you know, horrible things happen. We don't always know why they happened or what exactly happened. So I think he did it so that it could be authentic. Okay. Um, Miles and Alaska kiss, and Miles falls more deeply in love with her. Um, but we're not sure if Alaska loves him back. Do you think that Alaska loved him after the kiss? I don't think Alaska loved him the same way Miles loved her. I think Alaska um, loved him as a friend, and I think she loved who he was as a person. Um, and I think the kiss was kind of a, an expression of that. I mean, she definitely didn't love her the way Miles loved her, because he loved her. Um, the... The book is written in Miles' perspective. Do you think it would have been better in third person or if they switched off between every character? Or do you think it's perfect the way it is? I think it's perfect the way it is. I think Miles is the quintessential questioning teen. And so to write in his perspective allows the writer to explore all of those different avenues. Okay. Um, in Looking for Alaska, Miles leaves his hometown of Florida to go to a boarding school in Alabama. Uh, his reason for leaving is because he wanted to find the great perhaps. What is your great perhaps? I don't know. I think that's like the eternal question. Um, anything that could happen, I think that's you know, the great perhaps. What, what, our life, what we want our life to be, what our life can possibly be. I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever find the answer to that either. So you don't know the great perhaps till you've gone through it? I think it's it's completely like you're always searching for it, and I think that's why it's the great perhaps. It's what could happen, not what is happening, but what you know, what is possible for you out there. Okay. Who's your favorite character in the book? I like Alaska because uh, she's fun and funny, but I think Miles is my favorite character. Okay. In the end of the book, the junior class pulls off the ultimate prank that's in memorial of, of Alaska. Do you think it was the right way to say goodbye? I do. I think it captured Alaska's personality and she loved pranks. So. And she halfway made it up? Yeah, and she halfway organized it. So it's perfect. She wouldn't have done a traditional funeral. Okay. Um, do you think that Takumi was selfish for keeping the secret of what he saw in the night of Alaska's death to himself? I think he was selfishly scared. I don't think he wanted to know, and I don't think he wanted Miles to know what he had seen that night, because it, the reality of it was scary. When Miles comes to Culver Creek, he starts smoking, drinking, and causing trouble, but he finally found the friends that he always wanted. In your opinion, do you think that Culver Creek was the right choice for Miles, or should he have stayed in Florida? I think Culver Creek was the right choice. Um, I wish he wouldn't have had to go through all those avenues to find all of his friends and all of the you know, different things that um, figuring out who he is. Um, but that's the journey he took, and if that's the journey he took to find who he was, then we all take a different journey. Okay. Um, do you think Alaska was as um, confident of herself, or was it just a mess? I think it's a little bit of both. I think she had moments of confidence, um, but I think for the most part she faked it. I think she, um, people expected something of her, and I think she was one of those high-low people too, like the super, super, super energetic, but then you have like really, really low lows, and so I think she had to fake it a lot of the time.
Do you think that Alaska's death was a drunk driving accident or suicide? I interpreted it as a suicide. I thought she felt very desperate at the end. And because of her personality, the highs and lows, um, I think she just had a moment of, you know, I'm, I'm done. And that's it's really, really sad because, you know, one moment and then you have nothing else to live for. So she might not have ever reached her great life. Um, what do you think that final unfinished moment was for her? I don't know. That's I, I don't know. I think, and I think that's one of the reasons John Green's such a great writer, because we can sit here and ask all of these questions, and we can totally have two different answers and different interpretations, you and, you, and you never know what the actual answer is. Kind of like the great things. <laughs> so that was all my questions, and Looking for Alaska is a really great book, so you should definitely read it, and thank you for talking with me. Thank you, Maggie. And, yeah.